Ooh. Hello. Happy art week. There's nobody here yet. So I guess I'm telling myself, hello. Happy art week. Um, I'm Maria from the Camp Gallery and I am patiently awaiting the, as I've said, elusive, iconic, and incomparable Melanie Propopolis. Hi, Stefano. Um, or Chao Stefano, rather. Um, she's finally agreed to an interview. Melanie usually doesn't do interviews. Happy Basil. Um, but she's agreed. Um, so we're off to a good start. Um, she has no idea what I'm going to ask her. Usually whenever we do like a live interview, we send the questions over to whomever we're talking to, either me, Mario, Chloe, who just joined, hello. Um, we usually send questions over to whomever we're talking to, to kind of give them an idea of what it's gonna be like, how long it's gonna be so they can get their thoughts together, get in the right headspace, but Melanie is going into it completely blind. Um, that said, if you have any questions, um, you can write them out in the comments and I will ask them at some point. Um, some questions I may not ask in pooling questions, given the nature of the camp, you know, being the way that we are. <laughs> and I don't know why we're like this, but um, there have been some crazy questions <laughs> that we've unfortunately had to omit. Nothing terrible. Um, but definitely like, oh, my eyeliner's on fleek. Thank you so much. Um, but while we're waiting, um, like I, you know, opened with, it is art week in Miami. Um, we have a lot going on. <laughs> Needless to say, I think everybody in Miami has a lot going on. Um, COVID be damned. Um, Though I think we're all being pretty careful, and I think, um, at least in Miami's art scene, we're doing a really great job of um, staying safe, being super cautious. Um, we have two online exhibitions debuting this month. The first is Monochromos 2, which opens today. Yeah, today, on December 1st. You can DM us for viewing room links. Uh, you can also see the show on Artsy. You can even click the link in our bio. You can find it. Tomorrow, Not Dior's New Look 2 opens up. Um, same thing. You can check our Artsy. You can check our Artnet. You can check the link in our bio. Um, you can stay tuned. It'll be on our feed. Um, both of them are like part twos to exhibitions that we did previously. <laughs> Hi, Evita. Um, yeah, it's a... Uh, um, it's rare that shows get like uh, exhibitions get a part two um, and I think the ones that have are getting a part two like monochromos which is monochrome it's works that are black and white they're all um, it's kind of easy to fit that mold in a way um, and there's room for everybody so that's really exciting not yours new look two is a more like fashion centered show um, and again, we represent so many creatives that it's kind of fun to like work them into that concept or to have them work themselves into that concept. Um, what else are we doing this art week? Uh, we're going to be at the Sagamore South Beach uh, this art week. It's really exciting. We're in the bungalows. Um, you can come see works by Aurora Molina, uh, Edison Peña Fiel. Um, and some works from our October exhibition, 40 Women Pulling at the Threads of Social Discourse, uh, works by Alina uh, and Damian Rodriguez, or Rojo, I'm so sorry. Um, who else? Yolanda Sanchez, Angela Bolaños, and someone else. Um, hmm. Oh, I can't believe I almost forgot. So on October, f October, sorry, 
December 4th in the gallery. I believe that's this Friday. Deborah Rosenthal. Thank you so much, Aurora. Um, I can't believe I blanked out. On October 4th, um, we're having the opening reception of our December exhibition featuring works by Carla Kantorovich. She's a Mexican artist. Um, and it's called Reclaiming Poetry. It's really beautiful. Maybe I'll give you a sneak peek if I know how to turn the camera around. And that's all you get. Um, <laughs> ooh, she's here, everybody. Melanie Propopolis. <laughs> Let's see, what is she wearing? That's what I wanna know. I've spoken to her on the phone today, but I, I don't know what outfit Maria, she's prepared. Maria. If you know Melanie, you know she, uh, Maria, she, I don't, I don't know how you. to describe how she dresses actually interestingly enough hello. though last art week, hey, so last year if you can um, see me chloe camp chloe maria uh and i were trying to convince her to let us go through her closet a la british vogue she said hello. no <laughs> so she's elusive i can't see her I can't see her. Uh oh. I see me. <laughs> and I see y'all. <laughs> but I don't see Melanie. <laughs> um, well, anyway. Um, behind me is our new gallery window, how we've decorated it. These are all holiday baubles that are available for purchase, um, made by our artists. So we have worked by Stefano, who's in the comments spectating. We have worked by Natalia Shonowski. Oh, here we are. Melanie oh. Propopolis. Maria. The, in the virtual flesh. <laughs> <laughs> you look cute. You look cute too. Thank you. I'm in a corner in front of our <laughs> holiday oh, wait. window. I should, I should go in a corner too. Hold on. Let me go in a corner. Hold on. Those of you who don't know what we're doing, that's okay. Someone else does. Here, I'm in a corner. Okay. Maria? Maria, you're frozen. Maria? Maria? It's your corner. Hi. Hello? Hi. <laughs> Hi, this is fun. I love that this happens to us. Truthfully. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's all cool. It's all cool. <laughs> it wouldn't be camp if we didn't have a little bit of a technological difficulty. No, totally. totally. I think right. we're humans. So how do you feel? You're finally being interviewed. You've agreed. Um, she's frozen. <laughs> Melanie? Maria? Can you hear me? Yeah, you're kind of blurry. So are you. Are you on Wi Fi? No. Yes. <laughs> okay, you're less blurry. So I repeat. Okay. How do you, I'm how, sitting in the hallway you, now. How do you feel? You finally said yes to being interviewed. The pressure was intense. And so Were I finally gave it. Were you pressured into saying yes? Yes. I was coerced. <laughs> Are you willing to name names? <laughs> SOB. SOB. Um, Maria Andres. Um, let's see, Spencer, <laughs> who else? Mario, Mario, the whole gang, all of you. Yeah, that's a, that's quite a lot of peer pressure. Um, <laughs> Melanie, you're frozen. This is funny to me. Maybe I have to find a better signal. 
Hold on. <laughs> I'm searching I for a better it. signal. Oh, <laughs> Don't laugh. I'm trying to find a better signal. Is okay. Come on, let's go. Okay, dang. Um, dang. You over. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> see ya. <laughs> um. Okay, Melanie. So to start things off, if you had to describe Melanie Propopolis TM in three words, which would they be? <laughs> um, um, hopeful, ah. uh, snarky, and uh, I don't know, odd. <laughs> Okay, heard. Um, but who are you though? Like, tell me about yourself, Melanie. Okay, so I am a human being. Um, well, that we're not one hundred percent sure about that. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I uh, started my my life working. Decided I was. Uh, tired of the, the routine. So I went to Greece, which I thought was going to be just for um, a couple of months. I ended up staying 14 years. It was a long sentence. And uh, while I was there, I had some people in my life who were artists. And though I was studying art history, um, I never tried to be an artist. But after watching them create and do stuff, it sort of gave me the permission to try on my own. So I really don't want to hold this phone. Um, <laughs> so I started becoming an artist in, in Greece. I had my first exhibition in 2000. Then after a while, I got tired of being in Greece. So I moved back to the States. But because I was used to the weather in Greece, I couldn't come back up north because it's cold. So I went to Miami. I didn't know anybody in Miami, but I just said, you know, let's go to Miami. So I went to Miami. And uh, oh, everything happened that happened. I was teaching in, in Miami-Dade College, literature and writing. And some friends of mine wanted to start a business. And so I decided to help them out. But over the years, I kept on really, I was doing what other people wanted to do, not what I wanted to do. And I wanted to create a business that was more focused on the artists themselves and, and not... Um, you know, make promises that can't be kept, charge them fees, all of these things. And so that's how I ended up where I am. Well, not really. I mean, I'm here today because <laughs> we're yeah. here figuratively. Yeah, that's where I am figuratively. Now I haven't, which I miss. I haven't taught in like two and a half years. And I haven't done any art since 2000. You cut off. You haven't done any art since when? 2014, because I've been busy doing art stuff for artists. Oh. No, it's a good thing. I didn't know that that was how you ended up in Miami. You thought what? I didn't know that that's how you got to Miami. No, it was just a matter of um, the sunshine. Because I, I was used to, you know, having a lot of light. In Greece, there's a lot of light. Um, it's a different kind of light than it is in Miami. Miami's, the light is much brighter. Um, in Greece, it's more of a gold sort of hue to it. So it was very interesting to experience the different light and climate and culture and stuff. But no, I went to Miami because it was basically, fuck it, let's go to Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've ever had anyone curse on IG Live before. You know, it's funny. I have an art piece from Hermes Berio that says, fuck it, let's go to New York. <laughs> Shout out to Hermes. Hermes. Local Miami artist who's brilliant and kind. Yeah, he's just... But this is about you. This oh, okay. Is about Hermes, as much as we all love him. Okay. <laughs> um, you stole, like, a bunch of my questions. You answered them right off the bat. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so you started, like, as an artist, or you started developing um, artistically while you were in Greece. Yeah. What was, can you walk me through that actual journey? Like, what were you doing artistically at the beginning? Um, 
you do now? In the beginning, in the beginning, I, the, some of the first pieces that I made were just downright disgusting. Um, really, really bad. I was trying too, too hard. That was the problem. And so I tried, I wanted to start painting right from the get go and I couldn't. And so I, you know, decided to pick up some chalk. So I started drawing, um, you know, portraits and figures and nudes and things like that, abstracts. And then I went back to canvas and I started painting abstracts. But once I got to Miami and, um, <laughs> sorry, um, once I got to Miami and I saw the culture and I saw specifically how many young women were getting plastic surgery and things like that. It, it really kind of bothered me. And so I decided I wanted to do some conceptual pieces, which were the Barbies and the skulls. And what I did was I would get Barbies, usually vintage Barbies, rip off their heads and, um, <laughs> and then just shove a skull onto their head. Uh, but I would first embellish the skulls, usually with found objects or crystal or glass, sometimes semi-precious stones, with the, the intent that it really doesn't matter what we do on the outside. What's on the inside is the same. It's, we're all the same. There's no, no need for us to be you know, superficial. There's no need for us to judge people by how they look, their color, their creed, their whatever. And that's what the whole sort of like conceptual stuff was about. Do you, or rather, how do you think your background like informs your approach to your own art? Like, do you think that that, that the conceptually, that it's a byproduct of your experience and your studies? Yes, yes, definitely experience. Um, one of the things that was interesting is, so I wasn't born in the United States. I was born in, in, in England, though I don't have an accent. Um, but my parents were neither American. So we moved over in the late 60s. And I remember my parents were really surprised with, you know, how things were here, you know, between riots and protests and just how people were not treated equally. You know, if you weren't um, you know, middle class or above, you just, you didn't go anywhere or get anywhere in life. And so I learned very early just to see people and to understand people. I mean, one of the things that we had a friend of the family, his, we, I used to call him Uncle Arthur. And, you know, I knew what uncle meant. And so he had to be my uncle. And so I always thought he was my uncle. I didn't know. And it didn't, I didn't really find out that he was African American <laughs> until I was, <laughs> much older. I mean, I knew that I wasn't, but he was my uncle. And so right. if I wasn't, he was my uncle, you know? And so that's pretty much how life has been for me as, especially as a child. And then, so when I grew up and I started being exposed to more and more things, I really got upset with, you know, how unfair life is, not just here, everywhere, because the problems of America are not unique to America. You know? Right the genders and the class and the races they're not unique at all and so a lot of my work comes from that that's why when you first asked me how do I describe myself I would say hopeful yeah is, is a big thing because I'm always hoping you know for us all to come together and to, for you know everything just to be obviously not perfect that's not realistic but as close to you know harmony as possible yeah I love the answer Melanie, the thought. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, and then, so your background and your your experiences, and even your like wishes, how do they? In how would you say that they inform your approach to the art industry? Not from the perspective of an, of an artist, but from the perspective of a gallery owner, a gallerist. That's a hard one because I have a really hard time separating myself as an artist, um, when I'm putting on the hat, um, I, think that the, the, I think that there's a huge disconnect between artists and galleries and collectors. Um, I think that 
I think that things should be more transparent. I mean, all because it's all of those three people or 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 categories are involved in this industry. So when I'm approaching work, I'm still always thinking about it from the perspective. And sometimes, though, I have to pick myself. Um, because I am trying to run a business, you know, so there are sometimes to call a stop to something um, and say to myself, no, this thing that I need the artist to do is not really unreasonable. I can do it. I've done it. But um, I try and limit that as much as possible because I don't want anything to, um, I don't want to tax the artist. I don't want, yeah. one I, I saw as I was starting my own art career is I met so many emerging artists that if they had to, they would chop off their arm to get the money to get to the I mean, it, I saw so many artists, you know, sell everything that they have just to, to be able to get their work or to even unfortunately have to pay for a gallery, a gallery exhibition. And yeah. so, kind of thing that I keep on thinking about that even though you know on a business sense yeah it's a lot it makes a lot of sense to charge an artist it really does but it's not serving the artist the problem is is that if you pay the gallery tons and tons of money then they have to do anything the way that what we're doing what can doing is we are you know trying to a business which but we're trying to remember that we with creatives and we have to respect that we can't take advantage of them or exploit them well it depends which one it is i could explain my two of them happily <laughs> um so the camp let's yeah. talk about the camp what um, about <laughs> um no how would you how would you describe your your vision for the camp for the contemporary art modern project if you will the, the word project is a key element of my vision is that i really believe that with the combination of you guys the camp gang and the artists that we're working with, we have the feeling really nothing that we Granted, we've only technically the camp has been open April Fools, which is kind yeah. of <laughs> <laughs> that says a lot about us. But that's our snarky side. Um, I mean, I would love to be able to, you know, if it wasn't a COVID world, things would be much, much different. And, you know, I think we all are kind of biting at the bit. To, to be able to start doing some of the things that we want, which is, you know, doing pop-ups, different things, traveling more for art, um, the camp retreat, of course. Um, but we want to create more connections between different institutions, which, thank God, we are, we've already started that, and we're very lucky. Yeah. Uh, the Bass Museum has been supporting us in the past, ICA as well, and PAM. Um, but there are so many more institutions in the world. These are not the only ones that we can uh, can work with. I want to be able to create um, a roster of exhibitions that people know are happening on a regular basis. For example, the 40 women or the eight women or however many women sitting at the Threads of Social Course. Or we did the next one, Not Dior's Look, um, Not Dior. Not Dior's new look. Yeah, good, good, good owner. Um, what do you call it? And Monochromos. Um, because, I, you know, I think it'd be cool to, to, to take a, a theme, a story, and keep on reinterpreting it over again. So that's something I'm very interested in doing. I want to present some of these things that we're doing, like the, the women the fa with Fama and the Flags, that's something that I'm, I'm really hoping to be able to bring up to New York, to submit it to other places as well after COVID is over. Um, the, the, I want to have a residency. I want to, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I want to have a magazine. I want to have a podcast. 
I want to do a million things. And I think that we have, you know, the energy in all that's involved, you know, with you, Abe, Andres, Bella. Oh, my goodness. Chloe. Um, there's so many of us now. Nah, yeah. I mean, there's so many. Um, and the, the cool thing is, is you guys have been around for a while. You know, yeah. I mean, Gabby and Gabe, they've been here for longer. And then Chloe. Andres, it's really cool commitment, and we all believe in this thing. And I think that there's really nothing that we can't do. We just have to wait a little bit because you know, it's only been wait six months. Has it? Yeah, I would say so. That we're like officially running. No, it's eight months. Jeez. Right. Yeah, eight months. I'm such a good employee. You're such as good as I am, so, you know. So, basically, you want to take over the world. I'm going to say, yeah, I've always idolized Pinky in the <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Genghis Khan, but, you know, not in the problematic way. Yeah. No, that was just one day, a goofy day. It's like, you know, how I wanted Tiara. It's the same thing. It's all, they're all interconnected. <laughs> Um, so for you, what are the most challenging aspects of, of being a gallerist, of running a gallery? What would you say are the biggest challenges? Normally or this year? I think there's a big challenge this year for everybody. So normally. Nor normally. Um, normally the one of the biggest challenges is that there's just not enough time. Um, that's the first thing to get in front of all the artists and to do all the things you want to do. I mean, we need another in a week. <laughs> yeah. Another challenge would, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't yeah, challenge trying to write collective for the right piece. That goes saying, I would think that maybe that's the hardest. We've had a lot, of, or I mean, I've had over the years, you know, met a lot of people who've been people who do help us, you know, yeah. like Spencer, for example, or Art America and Art Space and even Artsy. You know, they all help us get our name out there, and and, and that helps. I I think the hardest the hardest challenge in a normal year is finding the right collective for the piece. For this year. The big challenge is me being here and you guys being there. I know. I don't think I've seen you not since, since last year. Not since February. Well, I, we did spring. Wasn't spring break in January? I flew out of Miami. No, spring break was in. Stop it. Spring break was. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was in January. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't because we had Palm Beach. And that's right. We did do Palm Beach. Yeah, it's, no, still, I, I mean, it's been a very long time. It has. In person. Oh, come back. That city's not going to sleep. That's true. For you guys. I can confirm that. Andres says early March. I left February 27th. And Andres, he knows everything. So he has to be right. <laughs> that is shade. Love you, Andres. <laughs> Um, what are the most rewarding things about being a gallerist? One of the things that I get such a thrill out of is when, um, you know, the artists share their news. First of all, I love hearing about the things that they're doing or the artworks that they're working on. That is, and listening to the, how they're conceptualizing and putting it together huge thrill. Um, I love to see them smiling. It, we just sent out a billion invitations to all the different things. And I can't tell you how many of the artists wrote back while well, thinking that I did the invitations, which I, I don't. Um, but they're it's amazing. This is beautiful. I love it. Thank you so much. And that's so rewarding because 
we spend hours doing different things, you know, trying to put together whether it's you know, the, the data stuff or signing the invitations or writing the statements or whatever it is. And then for the artist to be like, thank you so much. It's all worth it. It's just, yeah, it, I love it. Absolutely. So that, so you love to see them smiling? Yeah. <laughs> or at least know that they're smiling. Yeah. Um, so in a, I don't know what category this question falls into. Um, but what about competition with other galleries? Like, do you feel this like intense sense of competition or do you see yourself as like another, another group of people? Like we're another group of people in the fold. Like we're here to make connections. We're here to, I guess, be friends or coexist with everybody. Ideally, that would be really nice that if all the galleries, and not to say that that's not happening. Right. I mean, globally, if, if, you know, and there are some like Nada is, is a, is a compilation of different galleries and things like that. Um, but if, if I think that all galleries should work together and it, there shouldn't be competition. I mean, galleries coming in and trying to artists, that's something that, I don't like, really annoys me. If someone wants to leave on their own, that's one thing, but you don't to tempt them. Um, but beyond that, there's no reason for the for it all not to work together and be happy ever after, like Cinderella. No, yeah, I feel like that's a theme that we all run with, like organically, like at least the the camp gang under your direction. Because um, even amongst ourselves, I don't feel that there is like this intense um and like dark comp like competition between us i think um something that we're really successful at is working as a unit um yeah, i mean we do is different and what they do. you know every guy has their own style and and philosophy um is there is there a gallery and i feel like i know the answer to this question but i'm gonna ask it anyway um, is there like a a gallery that you admire so much you like kind of you're like oh I kind of want to be like that I can't answer that <laughs> <laughs> okay I understand no because we peer pressured you no, into of this course. interview I'm sorry what we peer pressured you into this interview so I won't pressure you to answer no, 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 I mean, of course, there there are hundreds of galleries. <laughs> no, not hundreds. Um, there are galleries, of course, that I aspire to. Right. No, we'll get there. Uh, there's absolutely no not to get there. There just isn't. You know, that's the thing. I was like, you know, fashion, you know, I, I, I learned a lot about marketing and, and management and selling and all this. We have the problem we want to look at from that point of view we have an amazing product Every we work for work with and for to an extent um they all have something that is in my opinion so incredibly unique um work is 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 something that's going to 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 you know tire you you get bored of you put it away in the closet i mean every single amazing to show and to say so no there's no reason for us not to to get to where i i hope we will i think we've got like the moxie. i'm looking at the comments so. <laughs> don't just kidding oh um, i tell you though moxie. i will say if anybody watching has any questions for melanie please you know type or write them out um and i'll be sure to ask them yeah um, so when it comes to representing new artists, what do you, what is it that you're looking for? Um, what influences your decision to either reach out or to, um, take a chance on somebody who has reached out? Um, I don't know. It's, it's a lot of it is, you know, do I like, like, is that, I have to believe in the work. Uh, and in a, in an in an in a fantasy world, and I work my way through it. I hope to have it to buy 
it from each and every one of the artists that because that's why it, okay. um, so that's the first thing I, I, I look at it is it like do I like this work then I will just do I'll start doing some research you know about you know different works that they've done theory things like uh, their, their history of um, that will not make or break a decision really what the most important thing is the you know it, it, I'm constantly looking at the work but sometimes though you, you know I may initially like a work but then upon for you it may be somebody who's really really emerging um I'll still reach out to them you know and and I will start having conversations with them and, and maybe maybe what they need just a little guidance you know like sharpen your lines up a little bit or it's like, so I may not, you know, take everybody who I find or who re doesn't mean that conversations aren't happening. Because I do think one of the hard things for young artists is you, they go to school or they don't go to school if they're self-taught and they, you know, storm out onto the streets and become an artist. But they really don't know what to do beyond making work. And many artists, for example, They'll paint one painting and they say, that's it, it's beautiful, it's fabulous. And then they will abandon it. They won't make a series. And so I try and counsel all the new artists that, you know, we speak to, to make a full series of work, explore them, don't abandon it on the first time. And there are other things, like they don't know how to read. These are the things that we have quite often with. You know, you've written a few. Mm. Mm. What influences like your taste? Because taste is relative, like it's subjective. Not everybody, we can like the same things, but our taste is not exactly the same. So what do you think influences the, the art that you gravitate towards? Um, I grew up surrounded by art. So my taste, is, I think it's, um, it's kind of broad. Um, so I think I, the the most the first thing I'm looking at is the, the the composition, how aesthetically pleasing it is, and then I'll start looking at the technique, the technicality of it, how well and how effectively is it completed? Is it you know? Is I don't I can't think of the word, but um, those are the things that really drive me when I'm looking at work, and I don't have a particular. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Works that I that I own that I bought myself. Um, there's a lot of oh, there's uh, abstract. There's contemporary um, collage, photography, video. But now, like I'm sitting here in my parents' house, and the stuff that I grew up with, and there's you know, 16th century, and there's watercolors, and then there's, you know, impression. Um, and so it, it, just whatever. Cool. How would you describe your aesthetic sensibility? I guess maybe let's repeat a question. Like if you had to describe your aesthetic sensibility in three words, what would they be? Minimal. Mm. Clean. And sharp. Interesting. I, w I don't know that I would have answered like that. Why? What would you have said? I don't know. Like, I would have said something like funky personality. Yeah, but your personality, it, in, in my case, my personality doesn't necessarily mirror or mimic my aesthetics. Mm -hmm. No, but when I see things that, like, when we're talking about things that have to do with aesthetic sensibilities, like, when we're talking about, I don't know, like, even invite layouts, like, everything that we would talk about, I understand why you would like something. But maybe that's, like, the nature of other people seeing us. I think that you and I, we work together. That's true. For the other texts or huh? 
thing. I'm going to say something to you and you write. Um, okay, so some more lighthearted questions. Um, I think almost all of them are lighthearted. Okay. Um, I am loving that I'm in a like a really bright space. It's all white. There's like a lot of sunlight behind me and you're like in the dark. It's like, do you want me to show you? <laughs> Is it dark outside? Yeah. That's outside? I feel like I'm in Sleepy Hollow. Wait, hold. Let's go for a little walk. And it's cold. See, I'm going to turn away now. I'm going to show you the sun is setting. Hold on. Oh, Can that's so cute. It's really dark. It's dark. Jeez. It's like bright as ever. There are no clouds in Miami today. I don't know if I you can hate see. that. Hashtag I hate that. <laughs> um, are, like, the camp gang influence on you is, like, becoming more noticeable than ever now? You're hashtagging, you're saying that you're living, you're talking about shade and tea. Wait, shade I've been saying for years. You guys did not define that on May 1. No, but, like, you're using it with more frequency, for sure. It could be it could be Corona um, Corona twenty twenty craziness hashtag late at the end. <laughs> um, I love it. I I live, if you will. I live. Um, okay, so Mario Rossi, an artist that we represent, he would like to know: Do you miss Europe and Greece? Yeah, I do. This year, so when 20, no, yeah, 2019 ended, I said to myself, okay, 2020, I am going to Scotland. I have to go to Italy for a couple of things at the end, middle of the year, around September, and then I'm going to Greece. And then everything changed. So yeah, I miss, about, with the, with, with Europe in general, because when I'm living in Greece, I I did a lot of traveling uh, for just vacation, but also I went to, I presented papers at some European conferences. So I, I do, I really miss being in Europe. This was in 2018, and I spent, I think, a month, and it was great. It was so great. I miss the people that I, that I knew there for the, the years that I was there. I miss the food. I miss the weather. I don't miss the earth. <laughs> how, do you, how do you feel about Greek food in Miami? Uh, it's... Ugh. Wow. <laughs> no, that's not true. There is a place, I think it's Astra um, in Wynwood. It's really nice. It's a rooftop place. They have great Greek food. The problem with me... Um, it's because I can co I cook Greek food. It's really hard for me to like anyone else's Greek food. I'll be the first one to admit that. So I'm I'm difficult. Except for, I like everything. Greek Maria says closed. I think she's referring to the restaurant. Oh, maybe yeah. Yeah, um, Greek Maria because I'm Camp Maria. Yeah. So I have to refer to Maria as Greek Maria, who's also iconic. Maria, you're iconic. Uh, um, yes, she is. <laughs> she's amazing. Um, she says, talk to us about Paris. Paris. Or Paris. Paris. Paris, France. Paris, France. I don't know. Does she have reason to talk about Paris and Texas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, poof. I, um... So when I was in Greece, I, uh, whew, I, I was, <laughs> anyway, so I went to Paris several times while I was there and I spent, um, I was living in Paris on and off for a year or so. I, I loved it. Paris is one of my favorite cities. And the thing that, um, everyone says that Parisians are rude. That I found them to be so nice. I, I go places, I would speak my horrible French. 
I would apologize to them before, but I think I got all the facials, um, like the, the facial structure of, of speaking so down when I was there that they didn't mind. And so they were never mean to me. But I love Paris. I also, also South of France is lovely. It's really nice. I used to go um, driving with my dad he would get a car in Germany every few years, and then I would meet him in, in France, and then we would drive around the south of France, going to different like inns and bureaus, and it was a culinary trip. So no, it was very nice. I love, I love France altogether. Ooh, how come, like why, how did you spend so much time in Greece? You said 14 years, right? You spent all this time in Greece, and then you're like, I lived off and on in France for a year. Okay, so, well, the reason in France was also, okay, so when I went to Greece in 1995, a couple months after being there, I met this guy, um, and he was super wonderful. He was an artist, probably the best artist I've ever encountered in my life. Seriously, this guy could had no formal training whatsoever, but he could draw anything in a heartbeat. He could take a canvas, squirt out three colors of paint with his finger. He would paint a woman kneeling by the surf. And he's just incredible, absolutely incredible. So, but he was born in, in France, in Paris, and so we traveled. is saying so true. You froze. Yeah, I had poor connection. Okay. Per usual. Uh, any more um, Yeah. I have, yeah. Um, also, Greek Maria says, Melanie Propopolis forever. I <laughs> I feel like I'm going to change the title. Hashtag. Oh my God. Yes. Hashtag Melanie Propopolis forever. <laughs> I'm living. Um, <laughs> um, okay. Um, 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 Emma Coyle, whom we represent as well, right? No, yes. I think she's a spotlight artist. Um, she wants to know if you see a clear influence from past American art move movements in the art product today, and if so, what past movement do you see as the most influential? Oh my God! You you don't prepare for these things? Oh, I swear to God. <laughs> um, yeah, I. It's interesting, and, and I think I'm also guilty of the same thing. Um, looking back at, you know, like Rosenquist and stuff like that, where objects are being repurposed, you see a lot of that happening. Um, and even while I was in Greece, one of the, when I'd go to the beach, like, it has a lot of sailing tourism. So, you know, people go on these boats and they bring their kids or they go to the beach the kids often lose their toy. And so a lot of these toys would wash up on, on the beach. Yeah. I would be picking them up because it would be dirty. But if I throw them away, then I'm just adding to the pile. So yeah. I think a lot of artists are repurposing things and looking, um, looking backwards to redefine. But it's not even just past generations of American art. I hate to say it again, but even going back to May's, you know, I asked last year to do a, his his interpretation. Um, Velasquez. Las Meninas. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, I think that, I don't think that any, at least today, um, isn't somehow influenced by something that was done in the past. Yeah. You Absolutely. So everything, it's, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's so, it reminds me so much of Joseph Campbell, you know, and universalism. Yeah. I mean, I, one time I was painting, painting these, these sort of like blocks of 
doing, you know, not abstract for a change. And I was just doing these blocks that were the same shades and tones of each other. And then I vision and the, this man who he worked on uh, the Greek radio here in, in, in New York. And he interviewed me and he said to me, Oh my God, your work looks like Rothko. And at that point, <laughs> I didn't know who Rothko was. And um, it's, uh, that's what it's like. There's so much, you know, so much that's behind us that we may not know consciously, but it's still part of our universal to the, like DNA. It's a good question, Mama. Damn. I know. I think that's my favorite question. Yeah, thanks for letting me uh, prepare. You're super welcome. I know Stefano agrees with me not letting you prepare. <sighs> um, yeah, I would say nostalgia is like the big theme and it's been the big theme for quite a while. Um, even like nostalgia for things we're not super familiar with. Mm -hmm. so that's a good answer. Well, one um, of the, I'm sorry to interrupt, but one of the cool things about the arts in general is the continual reinterpretation of what came before. And and the how you know like if we were to put into a room, let's say all of our artists, and we said, okay, interpret this. Each and every one of them would still come from that same base, but it would all be completely different. I mean, I think that would be a very interesting um, exhibition to do. We should. Someone write that down. Camp employee Karen, write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Karen. <laughs> She's working. Somebody. God. Somebody. Well, technically, this is work for both of yeah. us. Yeah. Even though it's like a, in a, in a non-COVID world, I feel like this would be a full kiki. Like in-person. Oh, yeah. Show oh, type we, kiki. We will definitely do that. That'll <laughs> also write that down. Oh, poor Karen. Um, okay, okay. Let me see which one I should ask you now mario rodriguez whom people may know from previous lives um wants to know how did you get to be so fabulous well that's such a ridiculous question <laughs> i'm guys what I'm, just, I'm just me this is just me <laughs> my, my parents were, were they are were very unique people who gave me a lot of room to be who i wanted to be and ridiculous sense of humor on both of them. My brothers are pretty uh, uh, ironic. Well, family thing. I can't, it's a popular. <laughs> <laughs> a new hashtag. Agrees, <laughs> <laughs> Mario. He would love that. He would. Mario's dying for a, a Grease camp retreat. Mario Rodriguez? Yes. Yeah, no, well, hey, let's, let's hopefully hashtag Basil will be good. <laughs> um, Greek Maria and then, no, Greek Maria says you were born fabulous. So I guess that's the same thing you've said. Um, yeah. And Andre says you're just a girl. I'm just a girl. Just I'm a, a woman. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Heard. <laughs> um, oh. SOB. Stefano wants to know um, how do you keep your passion for art going? Like where is it just like an infinite well? I'm guessing is what he's asking. It's an interesting question, Stefano. Whatever do you mean? Um, <laughs> uh, it's tied in again with that, that, that. It's like when an artist comes our way or a new piece of art comes our way or a project comes our way. It's the hope that people are going to see like the same level of excitement I have, you know, it's, 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 I, it's something I just want to share with everyone. And so, yeah, endless. I mean, I, I've had my ups and downs without a shadow of a doubt, but I think that this, you know, it, I think it's endless because art is tied into and it's, you know, to, to make, make things better, make the world prettier, um, help people out, 
be on it. Um, but have a so, so yeah, it's endless. And art is 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 it's fun. That's true. And, and all of our art the artists that we work with and the work that they give us to show is fun. You know, it, it may be it may appear on the surface dark, but artists and you get to find out about them. There's a lot of tongue in cheek going on yeah. in with a lot of our artists, you know, like they're they're playing things. So yeah, it's fun, it's endless. That is true. Now that I think about everybody, like just quickly, I think everybody's having fun with what they're doing. I think you're also encouraging a sense of fun and freedom when it like as it ties into creation. I don't know. I don't. I mean, I would like to think that, but I don't think that I'm involved in the creation. Um, you know, think of Dominic Schmidt. Like on the surface, his work can look really dark. Yeah. But then you talk to him, and you find out the stories behind the work. The and then, I mean, I tried once to translate some of the German. And I wasn't very good at it. But there's like a lot of satire in his work as well. And then also when you couple the videos that he does in and around his work. So you yes. get to see that he may be painting this, but this is not, you know, a depressed, suicidal artist. This is just a guy. This is his language. This is how he speaks. And it's, it's the same with all of them. Their art is their language. And what we're doing is help conversation. We're just conversation with everyone. A camp conversation, if you will. A camp conversation. <laughs> um, Julia Ronchetti wants to know, who is your favorite artist? Julia went in the whole wide world? In the whole wide world? Sure. Maybe in this galaxy, even. <laughs> Why that? Um, I have two. No, I have a thousand. Um, but I think my first famous fa favorite artist of all time would be Goya. Um, and my like Goya really does shape a lot of who I am because I consider Goya to be um, a reporter. You know, he, I, I feel that he has um, such a sense of obligation to present the whole wide world what happened um in spain at the time and you know he just i i, I don't know if he was judgmental maybe he was but um he's just judging everybody all over the place and then um and he's presenting in the, the third of may is third of may or the fifth of may the one with the execution the that is just blasting on the poor guy who's about to be shot by the french um, sure. one of my favorite, one of my favorite pieces, it's called the love letter. And in it, you have this, this beautiful ar aristocratic woman who's reading a love letter. Her, her servant is an umbrella to shoot her from the sun. There's a little dog at the feet, but behind her are all these women washing clothes. The, the direct contrast between the world of, of the woman the letter and the world around her I just found to be so important um, and so I love love him and then after him the first person that I ever tried to draw like was Frida Kahlo Queen. Those are the like if I could you know how they have on Facebook and stuff if you could meet somebody and talk with them for an hour I'd want to speak to um, Goy I'd want to speak to Carlo. Carlo? A couple minutes with uh, Picasso, maybe. Just a few minutes? I understand why just a few minutes. Yeah. No, Rembrandt, <laughs> hang out with Rembrandt too. It's fun. My, my um, favorite artist outside of every single artist that I work with are, are masters. I'm not, I don't have favorite artists of contemporary, except for the artists that I work with. Hashtag Camp Gallery. Hashtag Camp Gallery. <laughs> um, 
Julia also wants to know about your biggest stream. We have a time limit on this? 